Hello, good evening and welcome to my YouTube channel. Now, it's been a couple of weeks since you've seen me on here, so I'm just gonna I'm just get my tables ready here, just a sec. Screen's ready down there. This one there, oh dear. <laughs> I'm back to front. So let me just do that. No, I'm ready to go. So apologies for my absence. I have been away, as some of you might know from my previous um, recordings. I've been in New Orleans and then I arrived back last Wednesday um, and um, I've had COVID for the first time through the whole pandemic. Um, and I was clear by Saturday, two negative tests um, since then. And now my husband's got it. So, hey, we um, onwards and upwards. He's in the spare bedroom. He's wearing the mask around the house. And um, yeah, we're still being ultra careful. So anyway, I'm pleased to be back with you tonight. I hope some people will jump on here and um, I will see some messages come up. Um, the, it appears to be in the right place. So I'm just going to take you down onto the desk. I know some people. Hello, Jazzle Dazzle. Lovely. Janice, lovely to see you. Um, so just to start off, I'm going to get you down onto the table. Let me, I've nearly cut you off then instead of moving the screen across. Not quite with it this evening, am I? So there we go. I'm just going to have a quick um, reminder. Those of you who are local to me, um, I will be open. My studio here will be open um, every single day from the 24th of September to the 9th of October as I'm taking part in Norfolk Open Studio. So there's 220 people taking part and it's all throughout Norfolk. And there's every single artist in here um, from potters to clay to silver work to paintings all sorts of things in here um, and so there are extra classes at the back um, I will be popping a separate advert up on my Facebook group with those let's try to explain them here we go so I'm prime place here with all my workshops are going to be on during the two weeks okay so if you are able to pop in or share locally then please do um, and I'm looking forward to seeing everybody so I'm gonna pop that away that's just a little bit of a recap because I did that on Sunday night on my Facebook live as well so today I'm going to have a little bit of a recap on the paper pumpkin box. So this is the latest one that we've had and it is cosy and bright. Now this is a Christmas set and um, it is very um, fresh um, in our repertoire. So I'm just going to take a few pieces out. Some people might not have seen me the other night, but I'm just going to show you what it actually entails in here. We have lots of bits and pieces. Um, these are some of the banners and they are, um, I'm gonna be using those tonight. The, oh, I'll start at the bottom and work up, look. I've done some bits that we're not using tonight. So we start off, these are the instructions, okay? And it is a Christmas kit and you're actually getting 12 cards all the same and 12 envelopes decorated. However, I'm going to be bringing you different versions of these and tonight's complete twist because it's not even a card. Okay, so um, they're very easy to follow because we're English, German and French um, and the Dutch, etc. The languages, very easy, simple instructions to follow and they are like picture based ones. So I'll come back to those. You get in the pack, there's a cellophane pack here and you get all of the card bases and the envelopes, some pop out pieces. Um, so obviously orange and cinnamon is um, a flavour of this one. You've got um, adhesives. Um, and you've got twine. We might be using the twine tonight. Oh, and I just remembered I didn't get my ribbon out I wanted to get. These are just some extra pieces that I was messing about with, but I will come back to those. And I'll leave those on top because we might be using those. Some of them are stickers and they're very, they're like bored and they peel off. And these ones are just popped out and stuck down. Okay, you get more than enough to do all of the cards in there. And we get, of course, we get our set of stamps. So I'm just looking for something dark to hold this again. Or even light. We want a white piece of paper, really, don't we? Yeah, let's use the back of an, an envelope. Okay, so I'm not sure if you can see these on there. Not too bright. Tell you what I'm going to do. What I brought, did the other day, I'm going to bring this up onto um, the screen so that you can actually see more clearly what we've actually got in there. So these are the stamps that come in. Okay, and this is the whole, this was the cosy and bright set. I thought this was the easiest way to bring it onto the screen because it's nice and clear. And if you want to screenshot it, you can from there. Okay, and then this shows you all of the contents. Oh, it does bring it, show you all of the contents there. Um, so that's everything that you're getting in there. You do get the little red spot and you do get the block. Now I've taken those out because I keep those as giveaways and gifts. 
and I use my full size versions. Okay, and then this is the summary with the cost. So I've done the graphic, just adding those on there. Okay, so that is our cozy and bright kit. And tonight I'm going to be doing something totally different. So let's bring you back to me and we will carry on. So that's where the stamp sets that, that, that is in there now. So I'm just going to put that to one side. Not lose my banners because I'm going to be needing those to decorate. So just as a quick repack, cap these ones. This was the card made straight. Hi Shaz, nice to see you. This is the card made straight. Now I'm going to be adding some Wink of Stella on and some red rhinestones. So we'll come back to those. And then this was the other alternative that I did on um, Sunday night. And I made the card front that was that way on. I made it into a little easel card. So it's just put those pieces, folded this in half again, put another greeting inside, and then just made it into a little easel card. Okay, so that can sit up on the worktop. But again, those two from um, Sunday need, still need to have the Wink of Stella and red rhinestones on there. So what I'm going to do tonight, I'm going to take one of those um, card blanks out. I've got my trimmer to hand. Okay, so we are going to make some adjustments to this. We are going to be making a little gift box. Now, I have done this a long while ago, and I was just messing about with measurements. And what I've actually done, <laughs> I'm just going to close that again. Um, if you are trying to make something and you want to have, a, a, just make sure the measurements and whatever, whether you, it's going to work or not, I tend to start with a piece of card. So I've started here with my piece of card. Unfortunately, it wouldn't go this way because these are American size cards and they work in inches. So this is a little bit longer than what I needed. So I have to go down there that way. Okay, but there is my template just to make sure that it works. And I'll put that out of the way. Okay, so what I'm going to start by doing is the middle line, we're just going to ignore that one. Um, the card along here, um, you can't see my ruler measurements very well. The card here is eight and a half inches wide. So it's four and a quarter on that point. I'm going to turn it over and we are going to ignore this one. And what I want to do, I want to make some borders around the side here. We're going to be three quarters of an inch because I find that's kind of a nice depth. Half an inch is too small and an inch makes the box too small. So I've gone in the middle at three quarters and I'm going to take this to be just that little bit either side. Now I did do some measurements here um, on my sample. So I want this to work out as being either side of this. I want three and seven eighths and then four and five eighths. So it's gonna be like so. So if, oh, I'm just off the camera, sorry. If I just put my fingers there, there's my center line. So that's on there. I want to be just either side, but I want three quarters of an inch through the middle. So I'm gonna do this at three and seven eighths. So three and seven eighths is over here, which is two little bits under the four. So I'm gonna score that one down there. Okay, and then I'm gonna move it along to four and five eighths. So four and five eighths is just over there. Okay, and hopefully, yes. If I just bring that up to the camera so you can see that, you can see that the gap, oh, just see that on there, can you? Yes, um, the gaps either side of there are exactly equal. Okay, so we're gonna ignore that middle one. And then we are gonna go three quarters of an inch all the way around. So I've put a quick green blob on my trimmer here, just to show you, there's the one inch. Um, you can do it obviously this side, but you haven't got so much to get hold of there. So I just like to do it when I can on the smaller measurements, I go to the right hand side. So I am working in inches tonight because the card has started off in American sizes. So it's three quarters there, three quarters there, three quarters there, and three quarters on here. Okay. So that's all our measuring and cutting scoring. So I'm going to get my ruler out of the way now. That sword. So on here, um, we're going to burnish all these edges. So we're going to come in here and bring those edges in um, all the way around. And then in the middle here, ignore that middle one. Just go on the outer two edges. So that's that one and that one. That's going to be the back of the box. So it's not really going to be... Um, and significant okay and then like so so that's all scored now so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to work out this is the front of the box because it's going to be kind of up and over over there 
and I'm going to take a little nick out of the top here. Now, most of our punches um, we like to use are actually retired, the circle ones. So you can use a die, but I've, I've got an alternative here. I'm just going to measure this into the center. So my center piece between those two score lines now, with three quarters off each side, is actually going to be, bang on, two inches. So I'm going to do that, just mark a little pencil mark. And I've used it, chosen to use my heart punch. Because if you think about it, when this goes in like this, you've actually even got a little, um, a little notch there. And that's basically two, two curves, aren't they? Wherever possible, I like to go for a punch. So for a little piece like that, it's done and dusted, out of the way, and there's my little nick in the front, so I know where the front is. So, standard box, um, we are just going to cut up all of these sides. I do need my glasses. And I've got a feeling I left them somewhere. Where did I leave them? Just a sec. Take that side of the table. Yes, there they are. So, we're going to cut all of these edges up here um, along those lines. I like to cut just on the inside of those lines. And with our sharp snips, it makes it really, really easy. So I do all the straight lines first. So the flap is the piece that's going to be adhered, um, have the adhesive on it. Okay, so the shadows in here are not so good tonight. And then we're gonna go over the other side and do the same. So the tab is going to be the piece with adhesive on. So the, the thickness of the score line can make a difference, you know, when you fold in the flaps. I will show what I mean when we get sticking. Okay, so they are all straight on the long sides. Now, if you tuck in the pieces you want to keep straight, okay, um, I'm going to very slightly taper this tab. Um, saying I've been using for a while now, taper the tab. So you're going to make this very slightly, just take those edges off. Then when you pop this inside here, we'll put adhesive on there. When we bring that in, it's going to be a nice tight corner, no ridges over the top and no buckling on the bottom there. Okay, so keep those out of the way and taper those tabs. So it's just taking a little tiny, tiniest little slither off there. It's basically taking off the width of your score line. So it only needs a tiny little piece. It doesn't need much. But this is the same as I do all my boxes. So taper the tab. So you're having this piece as a shorter piece. Tuck that in. Taper that side. Taper that side. Again, tuck in and take off just that little whisper. Okay, and then this last piece, the same one. The other thing I call them is flower pots. Because if you accented that a little bit more, you'd actually be making flower pots because your flower pot, it's got a little, little narrow at the bottom and bigger at the top. So that's my flower pots made for the night. Okay, look on the head, grab my Tombow, oops Daisy, and landslide. So I'm going to do these, the adhesive will be on the wrong side, so I'm going to put the adhesive on these tabs. And I'm going to start one end and then come back. So I'm going to bring this one in, maybe I will put them, there we go. I'll bring that on there and I'm just going to make that into a nice perfect little corner. And just hold that a few seconds for the Tombow to go off. I have put a little, been a little bit generous on there, so. Oh, my screen has just frozen, so. Hopefully you'll catch up with me in a sec. There we go. Okay, so that was one in there and it's a nice, perfect little corner. So my, my adhesive on here, I haven't put too close to the edge. And it's just gonna tap in there. Bring those edges together at the top. Make a nice, crisp little fold in there. Okay, so that's my two sides done. There is a white core to this um, cardstock, so you will get little bits of white on there. That's just not, we can't do anything about that, unfortunately. So here, the lid is gonna be away from you, and you're gonna be bringing these two up next. So these ones will come in, and this will form the base on the bottom here. It's a bit like making a mini pizza box, a little tiny square pizza box. Okay, so I'm gonna bring that one in. So this is our box, it's coming on the inside, nice and neat. Bring that one in there and just squeeze that tight. Squeeze that up. There we go. 
and then the same on this one. Okay, so I like to tuck the flap in ready because it's going to come on the inside there. Okay, and just have this there, a little bit in the middle. I don't want it to go too near the edges because it will squidge out. Very technical term, that squidge. Sunday night we had plop. Now we've got squidge. So those of you who watch me regularly know I come out with all sorts of funny ones. Okay, so there's the bottom of my box. This is the top and our flaps will still come in exactly the same here. Okay, so I'm gonna put adhesive on these two. Again, just in the middle and bring that over. Squeeze that nice and tight till that Tombow grabs the other side of the card. Tombow is really, really good. It's so economical. Um, I love it. And it is very, very, very thrifty. Um, once it's grabbed, once it's actually grabbed hold of that and it goes off, it's, it's about, about 30 seconds of wriggle room, I reckon. And once it's there, it's there. Okay. If you do have a little whoopsie moment, then you can actually use a heat gun. And if you, if you act quickly, you can actually soften that adhesive and you can actually make it so you can just get in there and prise it apart. So there's my little box. Okay, just tuck those edges in. Make sure that's all gone in there. And there's my little box. Okay, so that was my little um, um, project for tonight. But I did want to just decorate it with you. So I'm going to recap a little bit on what we did the other day. So I'm going to grab one of these. But I'm going to show you some other ways. Um, see where Stamparatus was here. Okay, I mentioned on Sunday about when you stamp your pieces from here. If you like to, you can use your Stamparatus. <coughs> sorry, I'm a little bit croaky this morning, this evening, sorry. I don't know what time of day it is. I slept in till 9.40 the other day. I think it was Monday morning. Unheard of for me, absolutely unheard of. But people were saying that, saying that COVID really knocks it out of you. So I think that might have been the case. So um, I'm going to take that one out again. Sorry, I just did that without talking to you. So what I'm going to do here is choose my greeting to go on the front of the box. So I'm going to have, could be anything on here. Um, <laughs> what have we got here? Celebrate the season is quite a nice one. So I'm going to pop that in there. So I'm going to use one of the holes on here. So these are the labels I've already used or that have fallen out because they've just popped in there. So if I get that positioned exactly where I want it, in the middle of that hole, even space each end, I'm going to budge that along a little bit and a bit more. Okay, hopefully my head's not in the way. So I'm going to pick that up on there. And I do have, it was hiding the other day and I noticed it. This is my little um, ice hockey puck, um, air, ho sorry, air hockey puck. Okay, so I'm going to pick up on there. Thanks, thanks Janice. Um, I've done this before, but not recently with the um, paper pumpkin boxes way back. And um, with the... Um, kit collections is exactly the same because they're the American sizes you can mess about with the depth of the box if you wanted more like a matchbook box you could have it an inch or you could half an inch I don't think is really deep enough I mean you could put chocolate or something in there or a little piece of jewelry it's just a nice little size so because this doesn't go all the way to the ends I am going to use my two magnets use that one just to hold that top piece in and I have the kit comes with the poppy parade. So as I said, it comes with a little spot. Um, I'm going to use this one. Or I did think today I've got the evergreen out as well because it's based evergreen card. I think I'm only going to use evergreen. So I will just tap on here gently. And press on here. Okay, I used red the other night, but I'm going to use this one today. So celebrate the season. And this is like a handwriting font, so it's not actually all joined up perfectly. You'll notice the bottom of the B. Um, it's not a mistake. It just doesn't attach. It's not meant to attach. It's not there. Okay, so I think that's dark enough for me. So what I'm going to do is just lift that out of there. In fact, the best tool to get that out is 
slide those away, tap that um, with the take your pick tool and that will lift it up. Does everybody else love their stamparatus as much as I do? I think it's the best thing, the best tool that we've had ever, I think. Um, so really love that one. So I'm going to take that and here's my box. I do need to just go and get some ribbon because I was looking for some gold. We've got the gilding plates in this set, the gilding um, on the top. This is the one I was thinking of. I'm not 100% sure whether this one is still current or not. I think it is. But as this one's come out first out of my drawer, I'm just going to look it up for you and show you where it's in here. <laughs> ribbons. There's our ribbons. There's the um, Simply Elegant, which is the gold and the silver twine that I've got here. That's a nice one to use. And the gold shimmer ribbon, 156 on the end. 156. Yes, that's the one. So that's the one I was thinking of initially. Or we have the gold foil. Let's have a little vote on it as to what you think. On one hand, we have this one. Actually, you know what? I think that's quite nice. I think for a little delicate box, I think that's going to be better. Okay, so what I'm going to do is wrap this round. Obviously, the gift will go in there later, but what I do is I anchor this down. I leave enough room to tie a bow. I'm going to place some threads on here, some dimensionals on there, sorry. Don't need silver. Get my stamp and dimensionals out here, and my tweezers. So I'm going to pop some of these uh, three on here, I think should be enough. By putting one in the middle, you're also going to help anchor this down. So just to have where the opening is here. Okay. I'm going to place this on there. You can hear my hubby barking away. He's actually lost his sense of taste. I didn't lose my taste at all. It was just the, just like a summer cold. I'm going to place that on there like so. It's quite a small box. The middle one here, the middle dimensional, is going to hold that quarter down. And then we'll leave enough on there to tie a little bow. Let's put that in. those out of the way. Let's tie that. This is very springy, this gold, foil, gold thread. It's beautiful. It really is beautiful. I'm just going to tie a bow until we get a gift in there, and then I might be inclined to tie a knot to actually gift it and then the bow on top. Just to stop it sliding and coming off. Okay, so there we go. That's on the ends there. Make sure they're all nicely lined up. There we go. So I'm going to go back to my red rhinestones. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm going to take a sip of water. oil the old cogs so where is the embellishments that we had in the kit I've got a feeling that these are going to be too large we do have the orange I used half an orange on one of the kits um, but I think it's just going to be too big for on here um, I might put one of these on there I think just to come over somewhere under there or on the edge on the edge maybe if it goes on the edge it's going to need another dimensional so let's just pop a little piece of that on there okay because that needs to just match up on the edge there like so just take some of the plainness away from the banner okay and then the red rhinestones these have been around a little while these are so cute um got just a few left in this packet here um, they are, I forget how many there is in there, three, 220, 220 red rhinestones in there. Now, um, for this one, I use a stamp at the take pick tool. 
I squeezed a little bit of putty out there earlier and it went a little bit berserk so I'll just soften that one a little bit and I'm just going to dot some of these around good rule of thumb the threes so I'm just going to take I might put one on the bottom there actually so three on there okay just press you down mate okay so there's my little box and that was made out of a whole card so what that does mean is you're going to have a decorated envelope left over <laughs> So what I will do is with the extra pieces, there are always extra pieces left over, I will use this envelope and I will make another card out of the um, Evening Evergreen card. Okay, so that's that one. And I'm going to come back to these two that I showed you earlier. So this was the plain one and then this was the little easel. So these are ones from um, uh, when, um, Sunday night. I'm just going to put some decoration on those as well. So I took the photos and loaded them up and then hadn't got round to finishing off with some extras. The kit on its own is absolutely gorgeous to do, to use as it is. Um, I think I'm gonna do, do five on here. Odd numbers are always good. So that's the end of that packet. And get the others out. There we go, I can't remember the edges. So that's one, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna stick one in the middle of the cinnamon. So that's that one. And then these ones were from the other night as well. Middle of the cinnamon. And then take your pick tool is again, that's the other tool that is really absolutely fabulous. It's a, it's a, it's a good staple to have in your craft stash. Okay, let's put that one over there. One, two, three, four. Might have to have one on the top half. Oh, on the fair cone might be nice. There we go. Okay, doke. So those are just have the spots on there. I'm just going to now grab my wink of Stella. I have two here, so I've got one that's about to run out. I think. I'm just going to off camera. I'm just going to take the um, squeeze that on oops, onto a piece of scrap card, and then bring this one on here. Now the orange segments are really good. You just want to cover this. We want to add some glitz on here. I always recommend that you don't squeeze your Wink of Stella over your actual project because occasionally you'll get a blob coming out and then you'll get a big lump of glitter and you really don't want to have that. So I should have done the outside first, but I'm just going to cover this with the Wink of Stella. Okay, just come around the pieces underneath. I'm just catching up. You're using this kit for your cards and a cup of tomorrow. Excellent, Janice. It is a lovely one. It is br brilliant. Um, I'm going to have lots of kits in. I've ordered some more. Um, I'm going to have lots of kits for the Norfolk Open Studio as well. I did last year. Um, and they were. it's, it's interesting because if people want to just pop in, if they want to make one card, then they can make one card. However, if they want to stay longer they can, and they're interested in the kits, I had some visitors that took them for grandchildren because they were a good little stocking stuffer or just as a general gift or even a holiday gift. I always promote the fact that they are good for, if you're on holiday, if you're going in a caravan, I'm just going to squeeze that again onto some scrap paper. Um, yeah, if you go on holiday, if you're in a caravan or on a boat or something, I have been known to take kits, the, the very first paper pumpkin kit that we had here in the UK. It was the Hugs from Shelley. I had to look it up the other day. Um, and um, I took on a cruise ship with me and I did actually craft on the cruise ship. Um, very small little table, but it was, it was nice just to be able to craft. So that's some sparkle on those two. Okay, I hope you can see that on the camera. It does make a huge difference, just on the orange fruit. See, I don't think the camera's going to pick that up. It is there and it's really sparkly. It's lovely. You'll have to trust me on that one. And the other one is on these, these papers here. I like to do them on the um, fur cones because the fur cones are going to be sparkly. They've got a little bit of frost on them. And don't forget to shake, keep shaking it and squeeze it out. Like I say, this one is coming towards the end. There's still lots of sparkle. And if you catch up on replay and you haven't seen me before, 
I always tell people to hang on to these Wink of Stella pens. Um, even when you think that there's no more in there, you can squeeze and squeeze and nothing's happening. You can unscrew the barrel and add a little tiny drop of water or isopropanol alcohol, it's up to you. I tend to use water because I like to use them as a water brush and they do become a completely free water brush. And by putting water into them, replace your lid and then shake it again with the water. It washes some of that mica, the ink, the sparkle from the inside of that barrel. And then when you carry on using it, you just carry on, you squeeze it again and you carry on painting with it. And it's basically, I've got a tub over there. I've got about 15 of them um, over the course of time since we've had the Wink of Stellas. And they do make great tools for watercoloring with. So if you're using watercolour inks or getting customers at events, I've had um, at the last car, um, Craftoon Tea and got one another one on week on Monday. I'm supporting one of my team members. Um, then we will take those and we will get them using the inks out of a, um, the reinkers out of a palette. So these are really inexpensive and they just have another use. And we love getting mileage out of our equipment. Okay, so that's just touched up on those, just so you can see the difference. So they've got the glitter on them and the gems on them and the little box from tonight. Okay, so I hope you like those three. Okay, oh, just bring them down a little bit. There we go. And like I say, this is a cute little size. Yeah, I mean, it's good to take some chocolates in there or a piece of um, jewellery wrapped up in a little bit of tissue paper. Okay, love the rich colours. They are gorgeous. They are, I was a bit concerned having all of the cards identical, but believe me, they won't be by the time I've finished. Um, there will be lots of different alternatives. Okay, doke. So, I hope you love that um, and enjoy using this kit tomorrow, um, Janice. I can't wait to see what you do. I will have a look and see. So, where are we for time? A bit earlier tonight. Um, we are on the, um, yeah, just about 25 to 9. And I was on time. So that's my little projects for tonight. There will be more. I try to have a similar theme going through the week. So if I've used the kit on Sunday, I've used it again today. Um, and then next week I'll have something different. But I did just want to run past you. It dropped off the desk a little while ago. just want to remind you. Let me bring you back down to the desk a sec. Bring you that over. Um, the um, Stampin' Up! have got perfect partners on for the whole of September. Now, this is six additional dies that have been introduced to sets that you wouldn't normally um, have had dies. So they're in the annual catalogue and the Christmas catalogue. So there's two on here. So these are additional die sets that have been brought out. But also, it's while stocks last and it's the, uh, the whole of the month of September. Because there are dies, if you haven't already purchased these stamp sets, you can actually purchase them with the 10% bundle, buying the two together. So I've been uh, waiting um, to put my order through and I've finally got through, placed my order. I'm having the Playful Piggies. So these, I will be using this for one of my weeks coming up. Um, I don't think it'll be here by Sunday. Okay, so I might do Wednesday and Sunday instead this week. I don't know. But we'll wait for it to arrive and then I'll get creative with it and I'll be using the piggies. Look at that many dies, 18 dies in there. So you've got one for each of the piggy dies. Yes, that one's laying down. Yeah, one, the, all three piggy dies. And you've got the cart and you've got banners and you've got grass. You've got all sorts of little pieces in there. So I will have fun with that and I will have some pre-cut so you don't have to be online all the time while I'm die cutting. And the tree trimming dies is, has been really popular as well. So this is the stamp set in the July to December catalogue. And then these are the dies that have accompanied it. And then you've got the Yeti dies and the waterfall dies. Okay, so that's six sets that are operating just for the month of uh, September. Okay, so if you're interested in any of those, do let me know and look forward to receiving mine so I can be promoting that piggy set. Okay, so bye for now and thank you for bearing with me. And it's a little bit shorter tonight. Um, I try to go to about three quarters of an hour to an hour. Didn't think I needed the apple blossom dies until I saw that. Ah, right, okay, I'll have a look at that is several sets in the cat main catalogue. I think, I don't really need that, don't really need that. Um, so which one did you have? The apple, oh, the apple blossom. Yes, I've seen several people using that, um, Janice. I've seen several people, and there's some really nice things in there. 
an apple. Apple for the teacher. Um, Anna started back at school today, so no doubt we'll be having teacher gifts again at the end of term. So, um, yes, they could be coming quite handy. And also I'm making, because of some of the events I'm doing, I'm actually making things up to buy and make to sell. So it might be one to add to my collection. Okay, we'll see by the end of the month. Okay, anyway, bye from me to, for now, and I will be back again online on Sunday. Okay, and live on my Facebook. Okay, take care, stay safe, avoid the dreaded C word if you can. <laughs> okay, and see you soon.